Good afternoon. My name is Maggie Aziz, and I'm the Program Director at Dining for Women. Um, also from Dining for Women today, we have Laura Haight, who is our Communications Director, and we are both really, really excited to have the opportunity to speak to Maggie Doyne, who is the Founder and Executive Director of the Blink Now Foundation. And today we're going to be talking um, about our March featured program, which is the Coppola Women's Center. And we're actually really excited to have Maggie on today because tomorrow, Saturday, March 8th, is International Women's Day. Um, and this is obviously a day in which we celebrate women's achievements throughout history and across nations. So thank you so much for joining us today, Maggie. Oh, thanks for having me. It's an absolute pleasure to be here and celebrating with, with our new partners, Dining for Women, and hi to all the ladies out there, <laughs> and men too. <laughs> um, so to start off, can you just um, kind of introduce us to your program or your organization? Sure. I'm, um, I'm here on behalf of an entire team of Nepali women, actually, 70, almost 70 of us total, and just earlier this year we launched our first ever women's center uh, and it's actually right above a children's home and a community center that we all live in and each and every day the women come and receive skills training um, it's a support network they learn all kinds of skills and really just uh, come together to support each other and have a safe wonderful fun place to be each day uh, so it's been it's been really really fun. We're learning a lot as we go and and just enjoying it. And and I think the coolest part has been having the women come in and have a place to come where they really look forward to and and seeing the relationships they're forming with each other. That's great. It sounds so inclusive. Um, I think you might have a PowerPoint with some slides and pictures to show our viewers. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to introduce the whole story. Um, and be great. I have a screen share. <laughs> Yeah, so this is the entrance to Coppola Valley Women's Center. You can see the namaste and one of our young ladies standing at the front entrance. Um, the idea to start the Women's Center really came from a problem that we were witnessing in the community with our children. And we're primarily an orphan care facility. That's what we specialize in. But we realized that a lot of the caregivers back at home um, we're really struggling and when the caregivers or the women struggle it really affects affects the children and so as much as we were doing to provide a safe environment and an education and health care within our facility it was it was really quite challenging to figure out a way to solve the issues that kids were facing at home the reality of you know in the everyday life of a woman is 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 really difficult. There's a lot of gender-based violence, a lot of abuse, a lot of alcoholism, and the average woman spends her day breaking stones or working on construction sites and doing really back-breaking physical labor. So again, like I said, we were working with pri primarily orphans and we had all these women coming in and telling their stories and I was constantly as the director in Nepal having to call the police and and file cases and finally I got so tired of hearing all of the suffering that I was like wow what if I could bring all of these women together in a space and with an awesome team of volunteers and staff we decided let's do it right here um, and Coppola Valley Women's Center was born. This is our first ever meeting of a photograph and we put it out in an advertisement word of mouth thinking that at 7 o'clock in the, in the morning maybe five women would show up and sure enough 120 showed up to the first informational meeting. Uh, we didn't have any land or property to build the place so we were like let's just do it on the rooftop of the children's home and this initially was like out of kind of desperation but later we realized wow this is a children's home with orphan kids you know they really need to be surrounded by women and caregivers and mothers and bringing that female energy into a home where children have lost their mothers was really, really kind of special. So you can see it's right on the rooftop of our, our current facility, Coppola Valley Children's Home for 44 kids. 
and we brought in masons and it's funny I didn't tell my board that I was doing this ahead of time and like a few days into construction when I sent them pictures they were like how did this happen <laughs> um, so I was really happy when Dining for Women has pulled through as a partner we ordered sewing machines from just across the border we painted the walls with a bright beautiful color and the women came in and helped us and in just a few months we started teaching different kinds of skills like sewing, knitting, um, it, it really helps for sustainability purposes for our organization because we can make our own in-house manufacturing so the women actually make the uniforms, the backpacks for the kids, socks, I mean everything that we need to help our little local community function. So here's the women making school uniforms can see they, they really work together in Nepal. There's mixed casts, mixed ages. Our youngest girl is 13 and our oldest is 65. So we have the whole slew in there. This is one of my favorite girls who comes in every day. She's my age, 26, and she has five kids. And if she's not at the center, she's breaking rocks on the side of the road and she really wants to learn and, and learn a skill to be able to support her children. They made warm pajamas, they're learning to make their own clothes. You can see this is just that look of happiness, this young woman who made her own outfit and designed it. Here's uh, the women doing power poses. We teach self-confidence and goal setting and how to look within you to find your own power. It's, it's really powerful stuff in, in a room full of women. And now we're getting into product development. The women are making yoga bags. They're learning all kinds of fashion things. We have a goal to create a fashion show. And the good thing about working in Nepal is that there's just beautiful fabrics and lots of color. And our goal is to create a local, both a local and an international market where the women can create an income for themselves. And our ultimate goal is to create a storefront. And I just sort of wanted to tell one story of the harsh reality of girls in this part of the world. This is one of our younger ones and she wasn't coming to the Women's Center for a couple days in a row and the other women started to grow concerned and sure enough we learned that she had been basically sold to work in a shop um, in a city nearby and we had to go back with the women and the, the young girl who's running my Women's Center and we had to pay fifty dollars to get her back so that she could continue coming to our program so amongst all of the happiness and the good things that are happening there's really harsh realities and and it's just been so rewarding to see that this is important and it is changing and saving lives and that now this little girl has all kinds of women from the community that are looking out out for her and and noticing when she goes missing Here's a, a group photo with Magdalena, our Coppola Valley Women's Fellow. And just a picture that makes me cry every time I see it is uh, just none of the women can write their own names or do basic math or hold a pencil. Their fine motor skills are really limited, but we bring in a literacy teacher twice a week and they take classes and just six months into the program, all of these women are writing their own names. and. It's something so simple, but it really opens up all kinds of opportunities. They can have bank statements. They can, you know, start to read signboards and read numbers. And one game changer is that when women and girls know the numbers on a cell phone, they can actually get themselves out of a situation whereby they're being trafficked or, or really in a danger zone. So it's been, it's been really, really cool and, and powerful. <laughs> and... This is it. Another, another quick project is we're making our own sanitary pads and we'll talk about menstruation a little bit, but that's been really cool as well. These are the sanitary napkins that we're making. And we're always like, you don't have your own, let's just make them. And we came up with this really cool design. We collaborated with Mia Mikas globally and now we're able to hand out sanitary kits to girls all over Nepal. These are all young girls who are married off at a young age. I just wanted to have a shout out to these two lovely Dining for Women ladies who have actually been over on the ground, Kara. <clears throat> oh, 
That's really great, Maggie. You can see just from the smiles on their faces the empowerment that's being built within them. And you should be so proud of the work that you and your team are doing on the ground there. Um, you kind of touched on the fact that um, once you were working with the children and the orphans that you kind of identified a problem and you tried to formulate some sort of solution to kind of fix that problem. So in regards to the program that we're currently funding, can you first tell us exactly about what that issue is, like what the need was from this community? Yeah, well, the really, the really, I guess, emotional piece in it for me that I was seeing and feeling this place of helplessness was that actually the leading killer of women in the country, in Nepal, is suicide. Um, and you think about that, and when I tell people this, they're always taken back. They're like, really? Like, women are taking their own lives? And because for many, many years, it was maternal health and childbirth that, that was taking women's lives. But now, uh, we have this suicide issue, and I was watching women become so hopeless and so sad and, you know, be removed from their family and their network because of a child marriage or a, a forced marriage. And then they lose that that support and so initially for me it was like we have to give women their support back we have to give women their their family back and if they don't have that support we have to create a way to to create it for them um, so that was kind of what we did and and <laughs> when you all came on board it's really helped us to formalize it and actually create a curriculum and get equipment and you know m now we're moving into product development to really create the funds that we need for the women themselves so as they complete the program they'll hopefully be able to graduate we can take more women in and um, provide scholarships for girls too that's great so you've touched on some of the ad some of the ways I guess in which the issues are addressed. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about how specifically those issues are addressed? Yeah, so um, well, I'll just give you a couple examples. Um, so for the reading and writing piece, uh, that's really big. We're able to bring in a literacy teacher and um, like I said, women can then go out and actually learn how to create a bank account and sign their name to a bank account. They're taking now like a business 101. And it seems like such a small thing, but because alcoholism is an issue and because women a lot of times don't have land or property or any sort of rights, suddenly they have a bank account and they're in control of their own money. So whereby they were like, they used to take money and say put it under a pillow or pass it off to a husband or a man in the family. Now they have control of their own economics. Um, so that's one thing that's been really huge and, and rude in the community. Also just with kids getting sick, we can bring women in and we can teach them about clean water. We can teach them about reproductive rights. We can create a discussion where actually they're leaning on and learning from each other. Um, so all of a sudden, you know, mental health is being addressed, physical health is being addressed with, within the clinic. Um, and cultural and intercaste problems um, and marriage issues, you know, suddenly you have awareness around trafficking because we're talking about it, we're creating a venue to have a discussion. Um, we're, we ha we're creating leaders in the community who are looking out for each other and looking out for other women. A lot of times when we give a course or a training, all, they're all like, we need to get the men in here, we need to get the so-and-so in here, we need to get our neighbors in here, and all of a sudden we have all of these advocates that are then going and exponentially spreading that word within the community, and it gets into the roots, and it, it wears off on their children, it wears off on their families and their extended families, and, and that's kind of how we believe in addressing these things. I think Maggie's uh, I think Maggie's audio might be off. My apologies. <laughs> I always have to mute and I forgot to mute. Thanks, Laura. That's why we have Laura. 
<laughs> Always. Sorry about that. So what I was saying was um, what characteristics then would show that a woman has been truly successful after she's completed the program? Um, what we're seeing, and, and again, we're, our, gradu our first graduation date is actually set for this June, but what we're seeing um, on a very basic level is women coming in laughing and smiling. They're like, they're like kids going to school for the first time. I mean, you should see them holding a pencil or holding a crayon or doing a group therapy session. They just are so eager to get involved. They're so eager to have this, like, fun place to come where they're valued, where they're heard, where they feel like they actually really matter and people are looking out for them. Um, so I'd say that on a basic level, but down the road we're hoping to have you know, an investment of women in our school, in our programs, and in everything that we do. So it's, it's great buy-in for us. We're able to produce more and more of the things we need each and every day to, to grow and sustain our own organization. And we have these ambassadors who are now soon going to be running their own businesses, a storefront, um, you know, spreading awareness on menstruation. They're going out and selling sanitary napkins. <laughs> they are going out and, you know, creating products and, and spreading word and creating their own economic futures. So it's, it's, it's going, it's going to be cool. <laughs> That's great. Um, and... How are the Dining for Women funds specifically going to be used to kind of help develop these programs? We are using the Dining for Women funds to run our entire program for the next two years. I mean, we're looking at our entire operational budget. Additionally, we're looking to enroll 60 more girls into the program and into schooling, girls and women. So everything, this all-inclusive yearly curriculum will be able to bring in teachers, bring in counselors, bring in mentors, bring in materials that we need, you know, the fabrics to make it happen, the scissors, the actual materials in within the facility. And running, I mean, really everything that you are our partner and everything that we need to make this program work for an additional, you know, hundred the next hundred and twenty women coming through the program. It's 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 this is it. This is this is you guys. <laughs> um, I have the awesome job of being being able to walk upstairs and go in there every day uh, and and make the purchases of the sewing machines and sit in the circle and knit with the women. But uh, it's I wish you could all really see it. I wish you could see it firsthand um, and experience it because you're a huge part of the story. Thank you. No, we are just as excited to be collaborating with you. It's definitely such a wonderful program. And um, I think one of the things that our members would really be especially interested in learning about, just to kind of backtrack a little bit, um, in the slideshow that you showed us, you were talking about the menstruation kits. Can you tell us a little bit more about those? Yeah, um, so menstruation is it's actually a really hot button topic right now in the world and especially in Nepal um, because in Nepal it's believed that when you're menstruating you're actually tainted or um, dirty. So after you, even after you have a baby when you're bleeding for a 13 day time period you are not allowed inside your own home and you sleep in what is, it's a cow shed basically, you have to sleep with the animals on a pile of hay um, and even if you're a 13 year old girl who started menstruating you're not allowed to sleep inside the house, you're not allowed to touch the kitchen, you're not allowed to touch the water um, so it basically kind of throws you out of society and what you know every day and this does two things. One, it puts you at risk for being sexually abused because you're not inside the safety or security net of your home. And the second thing that it does is it kind of, it doesn't allow you to work or to go to school or to do things that are practical and, and one of the things that the women would say if they were here with me is that they use, you know, rags or they just bleed and they sit on the hay and, and they don't really do anything and it attracts flies and um, you know you, it's not something we think about over here like oh if, what if I didn't have pads or tampons but imagine if you really didn't have pads or tampons then you had to go to work you would use some kind of 
fabric. So with a lot of help, we came up with a design for a sanitary pad with a waterproof insert. And we had the women start to make them themselves. And those were the photographs that I showed in that presentation. And use them. And they snap onto their, and it's like a really great pad with a panty liner. And it has an insert and really thick um, flannel fabric that goes on the inside. And they can change them. And they can wash them. And they're reusable. And through that, we're starting to break a cultural and religious sort of taboo. And what it's really saying is actually, we're not dirty. And actually, even though we're menstruating, we can go to school and we can contribute. We can go to the market. And we can slowly start to get deep down and, and change that, slightly change that way of thinking. And it's just nicer to have a pad, you know, when you're when you're and they just absolutely love them. They we're giving them away to other girls. We're hopefully creating a business model to speak in selling, training them in door to door salesmanship, which will be fun. And uh, it's really endless how far we can go with this really simple solution to to menstruating. That's great. Now you're right. It's not something that being raised here in the states. It's not something that you really think about that really would even cross your mind as being a necessity because it's just so easily accessible. But explaining it in that fashion, just the addressing that need alone is something that's amazing that the center is doing. Um, and I know that you're producing, the women are producing more products. Can you tell us a little bit about the other products that they're producing? Yeah, so we've done a yoga bag. I'm actually looking at one now. Um, we're also doing these little basic like makeup bags or little teeny tiny bags. Um, a lot of clothing right now. A lot of the focus is on cutting um, because what a lot of girls and women know how to sew, but to become a master tailor or a master seamstress, actually cutting is everything, and there not, are not a whole lot of tailors or seamstresses who can really cut. Um, and that's what makes a good fit in fashion and, and just about everything. So. Um, they are doing a lot of clothing. Their final exam is this week right now and they're learning how to make a really sophisticated um, school uniform which is which is great. I mean they could create a business in and of itself just in that. Um, so the, I mean tablecloths, napkins, we're doing our own um, oven mitt because they don't have oven mitts there. We're doing aprons um, so that we're looking for a local market as well. And how are you developing that marketplace for these products? Um, a lot of trial and error. Luckily, we have 70 women with us every day, so we can ask them, oh, like, what would you want? What if, if you could create something, you know, what would you do? We want to get into jewelry making because that's really fun in the months to come. Um, and we're really leaning on them, like they are the shareholders here and, and they have the best ideas, the best fashion ideas, believe it or not, for really practical things that they know they can use and, and we have people over here that are also interested in, in buying the products because they're so different and made with such care. That's wonderful. Maggie, I really can't thank you enough for taking the time to speak with us today. Just your story alone is inspiring and the work that you do and the women um, is highly regarded, not just by us, but by pretty much everybody that hears your story and what you're doing. So we really, really appreciate you taking the time to speak with us today. No, absolutely. Anytime. I know we're looking forward to other talks and discussions with some of the chapter leaders and the chapter groups and I cannot say it enough. We really couldn't do it without all of you. You're a huge part of this, and we are just grateful. And it's going to be fun to partner and, and be in on this, this huge mega task of empowering women together. Really, really stoked. We're, the pendulum is swinging, and we're on our way to a more better, more equal, and prosperous world. And it's, it's going to be good. That's wonderful. That's I could not have said it better myself. That's awesome. Um, so thank you all for the viewers for watching this hangout and if you want to learn more about the Blink Now Foundation as always you can visit our website at diningforwomen.org and to view this conversation and others that we'll be having um, each month you can visit our YouTube account DFW Events 
And we hope to see you here next month to talk to our April featured program, which is Mariposa DR Foundation, which is located in the Dominican Republic. So thank you all.